Hey, what's up guys? Jared Valdir here from Blindside Health, drinking a delicious cup of coffee. And today I wanna to talk about coffee because not all coffee is created equal, guys. It's important to know. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm drinking a cup of coffee first thing off the bat. You know, probably hooked on the caffeine, hooked on the taste, hooked on everything about coffee. Coffee's awesome. It's been studied extensively. There's a lot of good health benefits to coffee. There can also be some negative consequences of, of coffee consumption. Uh, and one of those things that can happen with a lot of coffee consumption of, of low quality coffee uh, is the buildup of ochratoxin A. And so this is a mycotoxin, it's a mold toxin basically uh, that grows on these beans and gets into your coffee. We have no regulation on what's acceptable in your food in the United States. Over in Europe, it's five picograms per kilogram. You know, so they are keeping an eye on it over there. Over here, unfortunately, we are not. So it can end up getting in your coffee. Um, even with moderate amounts in your coffee, uh, chronic coffee consumption can cause that ochre toxin A, those mycotoxins to build up in your system. And that can really cause a lot of issues. It can cause cancer, it can cause cardiomyopathy, it can cause kidney disease, it can cause brain disease. Uh, all things that we don't want at all, especially if you are an individual who grew up around mold and you are already susceptible to mold buildup in your system. Uh, I would highly recommend looking at some alternative choices uh, for upgrading your coffee, for making sure your coffee is the highest quality. I have a great article that lays out five high quality coffee options that you can purchase online. I'll throw that in the description below so you guys can check that out. Um, some good coffee there. But my personal choice is to support local business. So going to a local coffee roaster and there's three important things I wanna ask. Number one, is this bean from a single estate? Uh, a lot of times coffee manufacturers will uh, accumulate lots of beans from several different farms and they will combine it all into one. And there's not a lot of quality assurance when that is going on. And that's what you get with a lot of your big coffee chains. And when you have that going on, you also have the likelihood of high okra toxin A buildup in that coffee or even moderate buildup, just unsafe buildup. Um, and so that's step number one in avoiding those mycotoxins is asking for single origin beans. Number two, ask them what coffee beans are from high elevation farms. A lot of times it's gonna be an Ethiopian bean, a Kenyan bean. Those beans are grown at high elevations and that high elevation is going to act as a natural mold and mycotoxin inhibitor. So you don't deal with that same level of OTA as you would in a damp, humid, low altitude environment. And then number three, ask if they wet process their beans Again, this is just a quick question. If the answer is no, I'd suggest moving on, finding a different coffee roaster. If you don't have a good local coffee roaster, if you can't find somebody who's on board with, with what you want out of your coffee, uh, I highly recommend looking at that article in the uh, description below. I've tried a couple of them. The, uh, the Keon coffee, the Bulletproof coffee, uh, those are both pretty good beans. In my opinion though, they don't really hold up quite as well flavor-wise to a good locally roasted coffee bean. I think the locally roasted stuff is just much fresher and you know, you get the one-two punch of supporting local business, which is very big uh, uh, philosophy of mine. I wanna help out uh, the companies around me the most I can. All right guys, one last thing on the mold front. Uh, make sure if you're brewing your coffee at home, uh, to remove the filter, throw away the old grinds as soon as you are done with your coffee. So leaving your spent coffee grinds in the filter basket, especially till the next time you brew is a bad idea. It is a great environment for mold and fungi to start growing. It's gonna be warm, it's gonna be acidic, it's gonna be dark, it's like the perfect recipe. So as soon as you're done uh, brewing your coffee, please empty the filter basket, rinse it out, and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, descale your machine every month or two. That's gonna help with flavor as well. And just make sure that you are running a clean operation because uh, mold, fungus, they will creep in and uh, they're not good for your health, guys. We don't want those. So keep it clean, okay? So high quality beans, clean system. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any health-related content like this. I wanna help you maximize your health, optimize your health, so you can crush it every single day now and throughout the future. Until you're 100 years old, maybe you wanna get to 110. I don't know, that's kind of greedy. But let's just get to 100 first and be crushing it at 100. That's my goal. Uh, I hope that's your goal as well. Let's do this thing together, guys. 
Thanks for joining Talking About Coffee. Drink a delicious high quality cup of coffee today. If you guys already have a go-to high quality coffee, let me know about it. Throw it in the comment section below and we'll talk about it. I'd love to know what you guys are drinking, what your high quality coffee hacks are, and if you got anything to add, I would love to hear it. So thanks for joining me and I'll talk to you guys later.